Hold up, hold up. Before you watch the video, parents, you'll have to decide whether you want to allow your children to see this. If your child wrote the exam two days ago, seeing the solutions now could just probably add unnecessary anxiety to them. And for SEA students, remember the SEA exam doesn't determine your width. For the benefit of my subscribers from other countries, SEA stands for Secondary Entrance Assessment, I think. It's an exam that we use in Trinidad to take children from primary school and place them into secondary school. Because of the high stakes of that exam and it involves children from 10, 11, 12 around that age, it can be a pretty traumatic experience for children <laughs> and parents. And of course the teachers as well. So what we're doing today is looking at the last five questions in the maths component of the CSEF. What does it say CSEC? SEA exam. Here are the solutions. Before you go, press subscribe. This channel is geared to secondary school students, but you write SEA now, so they should be going into secondary school. So link up to the best channel on YouTube for Caribbean students. One time. First question in the third section. Question 41. Omari bought some magnets and spinners. Each magnet cost $2. And each spinner cost $4. He bought seven more magnets and spinners and spent a total of $104. How many magnets did he buy? Now you may be a C-Sec student or a CAPE student watching this. Can you do this question? Check it out and see. Pause the video, see if you can do it. The first way I'll solve this question, the natural way to solve this question is to use an algebraic method. Which is not suitable for SEA students, yes I know, but I'm a secondary school teacher so let's just check out what will happen. If we set X to be the number of magnets bought, then we can see that X times 2 plus X minus 7 times 4 would be equal to the $104. The number of magnets times 2 plus the number of spinners, which is x minus 7, 7 less than the number of magnets, times 4, should be equal to the amount of money. And we can quickly solve this algebraic expression. This means number of magnets equal 22. A more SEA style method would be trial and error where we make a logical guess for the number of magnets and then we zero in on the answer. So in the first case, a number like 20 would be a good place to start off. Remember, each magnet costs $2 and each spinner costs $4. And there are seven more magnets than there are spinners. So 20 times two would be 40. Seven less than 20 will be 13. Multiply this by four. And this will be the cost of all the spinners. But if we add that up, we'll get 92. That's not the answer we want. For our second try, let's try 25. Maybe we'll get 104 with this one because it's a little higher than the 20. 25 times 2 is 50. 7 less than 25 is 18 times 4. Whoops, made a mistake with equal sign, but that's equal to 72. Add the two of them together and we get 122. Still not correct. This is too much. Our first answer was closer to 104 than our second answer. So and, uh, we know the number of magnets is between 20 and 25. So the next attempt would be to go maybe 22, which we know already is the answer. And when we work it out, we will prove this as well. So the number of magnets is equal to 22. I just realized I was using hashtag for the number sign. You may actually want to write number of magnets. Alright, let's move on to the next question. Question 42. We were given a menu. We were told that a family of four persons bought lunch from the menu. The total bill was $125, but each person, each person's meal included a fruit punch. How many burgers and salads were bought? So the total bill was $125, and the family has four persons. Since each person had a fruit punch, that's four fruit punches. A fruit punch is eight dollars, so eight by four. We would need to assume no more fruit punches were bought. The remaining money would be 125, take away the 32 dollars, that's 93. Now, if the burgers are 24 and the salad is 21, the only arrangement Shh. Shh. 
Now, if the burgers are $24 and the salads are $21, the only arrangement that could work out to give three at the end here would be four by three is 12 plus one. So three of this and one of that. Three of this and one of that. So the only arrangement would be 24 by three plus 21 by one, which gives us the $93, which is what we want. This means we had three burgers and one salad being bought. Oh, question 43 as a piece of work. And once again, I apologize to any SCA student who is getting flashbacks watching this right now. I told you not to watch this. I told you not to watch it. Identical rectangular cards are placed on a straight line at equal distances from each other, shown below the total distance. From the first card to the third card is 17 centimeters. And you notice what they mean by that. Start at the beginning, finish at the ending, 17 centimeters. Each card has a width of three centimeters. What is the total distance from the third card to the 12th card? It means we're looking at from here to there. Now in the exam, there was a strange line drawn here between the fourth and the 12th. I hope no one went from the ending of the fourth. So we're trying to find this distance from here to there. You can pause the video and try and figure it out. I'm gonna start right now. So the first thing you need to do is figure out what's the distance for empty space. And the empty space would actually be equal to 17 take away 9 because we have 3 by 3 here over 2 because we have two empty spaces. This gives 8 over 2 which is 4 centimeters. Remember this 9 here is actually 3 by 3, 3 by the 3 cards. Now, the distance from the third card to the twelfth card would actually involve would actually involve one to twelve take away two ten cards and there'll be one less space. So ten cards and nine spaces. So so we are looking at ten card lengths and nine spaces empty spaces this means 10 by 3 plus 9 by 4 this gives an answer of 66 centimeters hey hey forgive me for my horrible diagram in question 44 eh? but this is actually an arithmetic progression and there's a topic in additional maths um, but you can use some logic to figure this out. Cubes are being used to make a pattern to build staircases. As shown, how many cubes will there be used to build a staircase with six steps? So we had diagram showing us what up to four steps would look like. And if you notice, everyone adds an additional tree into the background. So this one was three blocks, three plus six blocks, three plus six plus nine blocks. And that's the idea we're going to use to solve this when we see six steps. So for six steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, add this all up and we get 63 blocks. That's part A. Part B we'll have to work in the reverse because we are given 100 because we are given 135 cubes and we are asked how many steps will this staircase have with 135 cubes. So if we keep going up from our sixth step, 63 plus 21, still not at 135 cubes yet. Let's add 24. That still would make it 27. Me just make it. This is 72. 72 and 63 is yup. 135 cubes. What I, I used blocks here, but it's really cubes. Whatever floats your boat, I guess. This number of cubes represents 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 steps. And this was the last question. Maya has 285 stickers, Renny has 350 stickers, and Zara has 175 stickers. How many stickers must Renny and Maya give to Zara so that the three girls will have the same number of stickers? Well, you need to share this. So you need to work out the total. Divide by 3 and then see how you'd share them up. Okay, let's try it. The total number of stickers will be 
810 you can verify adding these three numbers carries you up to 810 for equal stickers everyone must have 810 divided by 3 this gives 270 stickers per person therefore Maya must give 285 for current amount take away the ideal amount 15 stickers and Rennie must give and Rennie must give 350 take away 270 80 stickers and everybody gonna be happy and that's the end